Coming up on the front line of filth. I'll tell you what, I don't know what's in the bin room, but it absolutely oh, stinks in there. In Haringey, environmental enforcers are set for a crabulous day. I mean, I'm going to have to move out of here, I'm afraid, because it absolutely stinks, you know, and there's flies. Surrey sewer sanitation squad. Rather him than me. I don't want to be going down there. Plumb the depths to keep the nation regular. What do you do for the team, eh? And a clean-up crew in Hounslow discover a decomposing defecation. Nice pile of human excrement down there on the floor. A reminiscent of what they've been eating. Looks like a bit of, bit of lamb or something like that there. With over 1,000 criminal fly tips dumped a day, London's officially the grime capital of the country. A third of the nation's illegally dumped rubbish ends up on the city streets, around 63 illegal dumps a day, making it one of the most heavily fly-tipped areas of the country. My husband just thinks it's funny, because when, when we're out and driving around now, all I can see is mattresses and rubbish. I'll be driving along and I'll just be like, fly tip, mattress. Working alongside old hands, Ian and Daniil, the trash-fighting trio have earmarked one particular horrible hotspot for a deep clean during today's rounds. Hello? So if I lift this up? Yeah. Wow. No. A homeless camp in the borough has grown into a filth-infested eyesore. I think this might be recent, you know, because look, there's like toilet roll there and stuff, yeah, yeah. unless it's just been protected. I hope that they were using this in the summer, uh, which is what I think, which is what I thought, because in the summer you can't see in here, all the bushes are really high and it's only become apparent because all the foliage is gone. So I'm hoping they weren't here over the winter. Obviously, it's really sad, and we see this quite often. We've got a lot of homeless people in the borough. Um, yeah, and it's, it's very sad for someone to be living like this. The number of people sleeping rough in the capital has increased by over 200% in the last decade, bringing grime... So rat will come and make nests out of this kind of stuff. ..and crime with it. Looks like there's a lot of stolen Wallets, bags, mm -hmm. phones. You can see bikes under there. A phone yeah, there. Another phone there. There's lots of lots of lots, lots of clothes. Lots of things. I think someone's yeah, this is all stolen stuff probably, isn't it? Yeah. As the enforcers pick their way through the hall of stolen goods and filth, the scale of the cleanup becomes clear. Wow. Yeah, some more bags, cases. What's yeah. that over there, the, um, in there? But even this squalid squat is too vile... Oh, there's a dead rat! ..for vermin. It's probably one of the worst I've seen. It's terrible. It's full of yeah, sleep. it's worse. And just when you thought things couldn't get any grimier, Anil comes up with the goods. In, in. One from the side of this human no, 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 here. No, no, no. Human waste. With the faecal find, the team wants to blitz the verminous bivouac as soon as possible. It's not sanitary at all. There's dead rats, there's feces. It's awful. But before clearing the crud-infested camp, the enforcers first need to check if it's occupied. I think we should leave things as they are. Yeah, what we'll do, we'll recover it. Recover then, it up. Then just pass it over to get... And we can also speak to Street Link, right? Yeah. To make them aware in case someone is using it still. Keen not to displace anyone, they'll ask a homeless outreach team to monitor the camp for a week to see if it's still being used. It looks like it's built up over some time, um, but there's some evidence to see that someone is sleeping here now. Yeah, it's very sad. So we'll have to refer it on to the Street Link team and see if they can get down here and see if someone's sleeping overnight. Beneath our feet lies a hidden world a subterranean sewer system piping our poop and whizzing away our wee. Laid end to end, the UK drain network would stretch all the way to the moon. If anything goes wrong, we all, we all know where nearest hospital is. Keeping our national bowel movements moving relies on an army of sewer superheroes. Water on. Right, water on. Water on. Strong stomached men and women tasked with doing disgusting drain work. We've them to thank for our flushing toilets and safe drinking water. But when working in such a grimy environment, who looks after them? Enter Toby, health and safety officer for the sewers of the southeast. 
girlfriend's actually an air hostess, and she seems to have no idea what I do, actually, really. Yeah, while she's uh, sunning it up in Jamaica, the Maldives, whatever, I'm looking down a manhole at the back end of Guildford, covered in maggots. And it's not just maggots he's got to worry about during his safety spot checks. Spiders. I hate them. This is why I avoid manholes. It's nicer on the surface, you can run away. No such luck today, I'm afraid. Thanks to his specialist health and safety training, Toby's often called in to do hazardous jobs in between his usual rounds. We're off to, well, potentially do a bit of a needle pick in a manhole. At the moment, I seem to be the only one with needle stick training. So I seem to be flying here and everywhere, getting needles for people. With another crew arriving imminently to clean the pipes, Toby needs to remove any dangerous drug paraphernalia before they start the work. It's a, it's a known blockage at a hotspot area. Quite a lot of needles have come about in this job before. It's down for a line clean very soon. A line clean involves jetting high-pressure water down the sewer pipes to get rid of any blockages. If there's any needles in there, they could be forced out onto the street. A health and safety nightmare. There's schools in this area. It is a high street. It's busy. It's used by a lot of pedestrians. We don't want them getting jabbed by needles. As if dealing with slurry and spiders wasn't enough, needle injuries carry the risk of bloodborne diseases like HIV and hepatitis. So these are the public toilets. That sewer down there, which we will be inspecting, that sewer is used by these toilets. So it's very likely that people will be using these at light, late at night, use them for undesirable activities, should we say, flush away the evidence down the toilet. It's going to end up in the sewer, down the bottom. That's where we're going to have to go and get them out. But this isn't a one-man job. Health and safety protocol means that he will need a spotter at the surface. So Toby has called on colleague Jack to watch his back. Sweet. Let's wait for Jack and get started. The UK sewer network collects wastewater from all of our facilities. Toilets, sinks and showers. Rather him than me. I don't want to be going down there. As well as runoff from our roads. Meaning manholes are often located next to busy streets. We're setting up in the middle in the road. So we want to make sure the motorists have enough warning of our works. We want to make sure we keep our vehicles safe. We want to make sure we keep our officers safe. And with his health and safety training ringing in his ears, Toby's not taking any chances with the PPE. I put a latex on the bottom, make sure my hands don't get wet. Then I wear my construction gloves over the top. I put another pair of latex on so those ones don't get wet. And these ones here are specifically for needle handling. Suited and booted, it's time to test the winch Jack will use to lower Toby into the manhole. If I was to slip, it would snag like a seatbelt. Like that, that's full of rests. That's one of the tests we have to do to make sure it's actually safe to use. As poo putrefies, a pungent cocktail of noxious sewer gas is produced. So the boys will have to look after number one before dealing with those number twos. This is one of our gas monitors. We're measuring here, you've got... We've got, we've got flammable level, so that's your methane. We've got the oxygen level, we've got hydrogen sulfide level, and we've got carbon monoxide level as well. Before descending, Toby uses the monitor to make sure each of the gas levels are within safe limits. Carbon monoxide, asphyxiant, we don't want that going up. H2S, that's toxic, we don't want that going up. That's quite easy one to detect in the the monitor, to be fair, because you'll start smelling rotten eggs. And then you've got your CH4, which is your methane, and that is explosive, so let's hope that one definitely isn't in there. With the last of the checks completed, it's safe to enter the manhole. But will there be any syringes or spiders down in the depths? Coming up, enforcers in the North London borough of Haringey. I don't know what's in the bin room, but it absolutely oh, stinks in there. Man. Can't sidestep a fishy fly tip. If we find out that a business has been uh, fly tipping their waste, they could receive up to a fifty thousand pound fine in a court. Our trash fighting trio. Hi. Take a hands-on approach with Hounslow's little outs. What we need to do is for somebody to come across the road to me to pick up the bag and put it back onto your property. And after his mission down a manhole... Toes, mate. 
Summer. Toby's in need of a new pair of trousers. That's the money shot right there. Back in Surrey, and specialist sewerman Toby is halfway down a manhole checking for used needles. Pass me that rod, Jack. Another crew is arriving imminently to clean the pipes. So, are there any dangerous hazards down in the depths? Any sharps? At the moment, have we got any sharps? No, I think we're all right for sharps. Luckily for Toby, there's no syringes or deadly gas buildups to deal with today. But are there any other obstructions? Ooh, big, big bit of poo. Big bit of poo? Yeah, man. Oh, we got some wipes as well. Uh, the benching has broken in the corner, and there are roots partially in the channel on the downstream. Got a crowbar, Jack. I have. He's found some roots on the outlet uh, that, that could potentially cause an issue in the future. Got an open channel there now, Jack. Uh, but Tobes, um, Tobes removed them. He's now restored full flow on that whole that whole system. With the roots safely removed and no syringes found. It's a good morning's work. Right, let's get this packed away, then. And the sewer's now ready for a proper line clean. Fatty down there, that is. Sweet. Only thing left to do is scrub off the scent of the sewer. Toes, mate. Turn around. That's the money shot right there. What do you do for the team, eh? There were no spiders in there. That's a touch. No spiders, happy about that. But there's no rest for the well-trained, as up next on his rounds is a surprise health and safety spot check. Back above ground, and enforcers in the North London borough of Haringey use an extensive CCTV network to police their patch and catch the little outs. We've got over 100 cameras dotted around the borough, and the purpose of those cameras is to protect the public and identify individuals that are engaged in crime. Surveilling an area of just 11 square miles, it's not long before the cameras spot a fresh fly tip dumped near some residential bins. So enforcement manager Brian is dispatched by HQ to investigate the crime scene. So I've worked in Harringay for 12 years, and I am quite passionate about making a difference in this borough. Fly tipping is one of the most reported nuisances uh, our service uh, receives. It really causes a lot of misery for re residents in Haringey. As Brian pulls up, fellow officer Kenny's already on. Good if there was an invoice or something like that. Yeah, there, absolutely. No, I don't think there's anything else, Brian. Yeah, I don't think no. there's anything in there. I've tipped it over. That's it. Hello. We've got something there. Oh, wow. It's a delivery note. So Excellent. What, what it was was a beveled natural solid oak triple wardrobe with a top. So it's got the name of a man and the postcode. Bingo. That's exactly the kind of hard evidence the enforcers are looking for. OK, excellent. It's a great lead, that. It's excellent. With the name and postcode in hand, there's a good chance that the enforcers can collar the culprit responsible. But something else smells fishy about this site. I'll tell you what, I don't know what's in the bin room, but it absolutely oh, stinks in there. man. Look at that. Yeah, it's it's like... a... Well, I'll have a look in there. I mean, there's a crab there. There's some meat and stuff. Oh, that's but, um, filthy. I'll just get some photographs first. Yeah. Braving the fishy fragrance, the pair want to know why the waste isn't being disposed of properly. I'll just pull this out and have a look. Oh. Feces in there, there's nappies, there's crabs, 
Oh, there's flies. Looks like there's been some shellfish dumping here. The problem is it's supposed to have two bins, but the bin that's at the back is filled up. With one of the bins blocked, an accumulation of rotting refuse is piling up in the bin chamber. A lot of this waste looks like commercial. And if it is, that means it's going to be very difficult for residents to dispose of their waste. Suspecting there's commercial waste in the residential bins, can the boys reel in any evidence to catch a culprit? I mean, I'm going to have to move out of here, I'm afraid, because it absolutely yeah, Kenny, stinks, think, you know, and to be honest, flies and stuff on the floor. Ugh. I mean, looking at this fish box, Kenny, what do you reckon? Doesn't it not look similar to the fish what? box that's yeah, yeah. down the road there, the near, outside there's... the business? So if we find out that a business has been uh, fly tipping their waste uh, in a residential bin or on the street, uh, we'll take them to court and they could be prosecuted. They could receive up to a £50,000 fine in a court. With a solid lead to follow up on, the boys peg their noses and begin the clear up. Brian, I'm, uh, this really stinks, yeah? I, I yeah. can't leave this how it is. No, absolutely, I totally agree. But there's clearly perks to being one of the best dressed bin men in the borough. I can see you've got your best jacket on today, so you don't worry, I'll do all the hard work. Oh, thanks for that, Kenny. I uh, appreciate that. Um... Jesus. I can't do it. I've got to help him. Sorry. Cashmere jacket or I mean, not cashmere jacket? Some of the stuff is. And the stuff on the floor, or whether it's the stuff that's coming out of the oh. bag. But... It's got doo doo in it. The main fly tip requires more than a litter pick. So Brian calls in the council's cleanup crew. Hi, Debbie, it's Brian. How you doing? We've come across quite a large fly tip. Uh, wondering if you could get a crew down here to collect it. With the bins usable again, it's time to find out who's responsible for the fishy filth. Got the fish box. Yep. Got the Asian supermarket on the corner. I know that they sell fish there. They've actually just put a fish box outside on the pavement now with a bag of rubbish. Yeah. So I think if we go and talk to them and try and establish if they've been using the, uh, the bin chamber or not. Absolutely, yeah. With a possible £50,000 fine for illegal commercial dumping, let's hope the owners aren't left floundering for an excuse when confronted about the fly-tipped bins. 20 miles away, under the flight path of Heathrow, Experienced grime fighters Ian and Anil are selling the benefits of a good old-fashioned foot patrol to newbie Chloe. What we're doing is looking in uh, the people's gardens to see uh, the state of the gardens, uh, see if there's any waste in the gardens where there's a potential that we may issue a CPN warning to have the waste cleared. Little out behaviour is a nightmare for neighbourhoods. So community protection notices can force residents to clean up their act, even on their own private property. The things we look for are soft furnishings, so people dump mattresses, um, sofas. It's not long before they spot an unneighbourly dump from a nearby dwelling. Yeah, soft furnishings, broken down unit. We'll see if there's anything in the, in the black bag to try and find evidence where it may have come from. Uh, I can see there's already nappies in there, which is disgusting. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm going to be a bit careful going into this bag. Rummaging through refuse for clues. <laughs> That's Will and Kate. Is royally revolting. I don't think it'd be them. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, God. Now we can smell it. Unable to extract a king's ransom with this evidence, the enforcers dig a little deeper. When I applied for the job, I knew that it would involve going through rubbish and obviously um, coming across really quite grimy and gross situations. So I knew that. I was fully prepared for that. So what about this site? Does Hounslow's newest grime fighter feel there's a case for prosecution? We've had a look through as best we can. and It doesn't look like there's much evidence in here. Um, to continue. So what we'll do is we'll refer it, we've tidied it up and we'll refer it to Hounslow Highways to come and clear it as quickly as possible. Because um, if foxes get into that and spread all those nappies everywhere, then it is quite a health concern. Anil clearly favours a hands-off approach to enforcement. Just pick it up with your glove. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> <Can't do that. laughs> Sorry. Disgusting. And there's more grime to come as they continue their street sweep. Yeah. Right, what we do, go, go through the bags. Yeah. Uh, oh, right, I've got a letter yeah. here. A letter. 
straight away. OK, yep. It's definitely grime, but at least there might be some punishment this time. This is gold. <laughs> to find an envelope with, uh, with a name and address on, especially if it's locally in the area, because then it's, it's quite obvious who's dumped it here. Yeah, it's important to take pictures of anything that we find and where we find it so that, you know, it's, we can use it as evidence. If it goes to court, then it's evidence. With the evidence in the bag, the enforcers can follow up with these suspects later. For now, the street sweep continues, and it's not long before they spot another fly tip. We've got a number of evidence of, of the same address with the same name. It's an evidential jackpot, and Ian can't help but turn teacher for his duty in trash. This is a potential uh, fixed penalty for littering. Yep. Uh, like, and the reason why is because the bag isn't outside her own address and it's on the opposite side of the road to her. So what we'll do is we'll go and give her a knock and find out how her waste was found on the opposite side. Taking offence to such unneighbourly behaviour, the enforcers cross the street and confront the dumpers directly. Hi. Right, London Path Hounslow. We're doing a street inspection on the road. Is a black bag with lots of information from your property. What we need to do is for somebody to come across the road to me to pick up the bag and put it back onto your property. The enforcers decide against a fine, opting for a more hands-on approach. Thanks for picking it up. Thank you. Inspections are designed to scrub up problem streets. And while Ian's approach didn't result in a fine, it did clean up the grime. Coming up, Toby's covert health and safety checkup. They've already clocked me. They've, they've noticed it already. Is rumbled. The orange just gives it away. And the fact I keep smiling at him as well, so there you go. <laughs> and an anti social fly tipper in Harringay. Press the button, blue lights flash on the camera. Gets his five minutes of fame. The gentleman's looked up and saw, lo and behold, I've been captured on CCTV. After finding a rather fragrant fly tip in North London. There's crabs. Oh, there's flies. Enforcers Brian and Kenny are hot on the case of those responsible for the fishy filth. I mean, looking at this fish box, Kenny, what do you reckon? Doesn't it not look similar to the fish box that's yeah, yeah. down the road there, outside the business? Fish box in hand, they confront the shop owners directly about the mess. Hello. How are you? from Haringey Council. The enforcers first need to establish where the supermarket should be disposing of their waste. So we're looking at the rubbish, the rubbish. So they collar the landlord on the phone to find out. Hello there, hi, I'm calling from Haringey Council. The landlord informs the enforcers that the supermarket is authorised to use the bins for waste disposal. But there's a problem. Apparently, the bin has been set on fire and it can't be moved, so it needs to be exchanged for a new one. And then we've got the problem with the second residential bin that has been fly-tipped. With the supermarket's bin out of action, an overspill of rotting waste has begun to pile up within the bin chamber. So the enforcers remind the landlord of his rubbish-related responsibilities. Because what will happen if this doesn't resolve is that we will have to end up serving an enforcement notice on you to, 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 res to resolve this. Absolutely. That sounds good. Just spoke to the landlord on the, t on the um, phone. And what we're going to do, we're going to arrange to meet him in the next few days on site, and we're going to talk through how we can make this, this space fit for purpose. It's a good job. Good job, yeah. I think we deserve a cup of tea. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> From stinky seafood to surprise health and safety audits. Sewer man Toby's on his way to a random spot check. My day-to-day -day role is I visit crews, inspect their work, I monitor their health and safety performance on site. Drainage companies aren't only concerned with making gross profits. When your office is a toilet, sewer safety is paramount. It's a dangerous industry. And that's why I have a job, to make sure that we can prevent accidents from happening. Today, he's checking to see if crews in the area are following the proper health and safety protocol. So the idea of driving around the unmarked car is that 
In theory, I'm going to try and jump out and cruise when they're setting up, when they're working, so they're not going to notice I'm there. I make sure they're using the right equipment. I make sure they've set up correctly. I make sure they've got their first aid provisions on board. Arriving at the job, Toby hangs back to see if he can spot any health and safety violations. So I pulled up, see this crew here. So we'll go jump out, have a quick look around the lorry, see what they're up to, see what they've done, see what they've got, got to do next, and we'll go from there. They've already clocked me. They've, they've noticed it already. The orange just gives it away. And the fact I keep smiling at him as well, so there you go. <laughs> Rumbled. Let's hope it still smiles all round after the spot check. After a morning spent investigating a fly tip first spotted by cameras in North London, Enforcer Brian's returning to Haringey's CCTV control room. The team have had quite a number of successes, particularly with the use of CCTV. CCTV, when used um, effectively, can be a, a real, real significant tool. And we, we use it a lot here to try and um, uh, catch fly tippers. Faced with 1,800 illegal fly tips a month, the council covers its 11 square miles with over 100 CCTV cameras. Okay, this is our CCTV control room, and this is where this is where it all happens. But even with so many cameras, it's impossible to be in all places at all times. So they've a trick up their sleeves. We've got a, a small deployment of um, cameras which we can move around and we can put them in key, key locations. That way we can target uh, specific hotspots that we know are big problems. Haringey spends three million pounds a year dealing with criminal fly tippers. So here we've got one of our fly tipping hotspots, a location called Carbuncle Passage. Uh, we often get reports of dump rubbish here and residents are really annoyed that people would come and dump rubbish in, uh, in this area. Cameras operate 24-7, and the enforcers comb the footage for clues. So all our ASB enforcement officers are fully trained uh, to the same standard as the police, and they use the same techniques to try and identify fly tippers. And it's not just retrospective justice. CCTV technology now plays an active role in preventing fly tipping. We're now on our way to one of our fly tipping hotspots where we have one of uh, our redeployable cameras installed. And one deployed at this location recently paid for itself. A gentleman came from this direction over here carrying what looked like a large flat screen television. Placed it against the wall. Well, he didn't actually place it against the wall. He raised it above his head and smashed it on the floor. Why? Only heaven knows. Started to kick it, kicked it a few times. So what he didn't know is that everything was being captured on CCTV. So after he after smashed the TV on the ground and about to walk away, the operator in the CCTV control room thought to himself, I've seen enough. I'm going to alert him to the fact that everything he's done has been caught on CCTV. So he's pressed the button, blue lights flashed on the camera, and the gentleman's looked up and saw, lo and behold, I've been captured on CCTV. The latest technology allows the control room team to foil the fly tippers in the act. Ah, can you see me? <laughs> Are you able to give us a demonstration of uh, the redeployable camera with the uh, blue light? You will be detected in an unauthorised area. In the area, or the police will be called. With cameras capable of catching the criminals red-handed, conviction rates have soared. He appeared to walk into a property which we believe he resided in, and all of that was captured on CCTV. And on this occasion, he was able to issue them with a £400 fixed penalty notice. Back in Surrey, and sewerman Toby's stealth and safety spot checks being rumbled thanks to his high vis. Oh, he's hiding now. He's got scared. He's just noticed me properly now. The team's scheduled to inspect a blockage on the street. Oh, Adam. Afternoon, Tiger. Guess what I'm here to do? Not to ward it. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, let's go. Lovely. Look at your first aid box, please. Your eye wash. 
But before the job can start, Toby must ensure the crew have all the right equipment to do the work safely. They're out on the road every day, you know, they're not always near a hospital or whatever, so if you have the first aid kit, they're all to emergency first aid. You're working with some pretty grim stuff. Get out in your eye, you're going to want to get out as soon as possible. Excrement is a breeding ground for harmful microorganisms, and exposure can lead to potentially fatal Viles disease, as well as gastroenteritis and hepatitis. Have a break on the hose drum, keep that locked. Toby's stringent safety checklist might seem excessive, but rigorous enforcement ensures the crew can deal with most sewer safety risks on site. They know what I'm there to do, and they know when what's right and what is wrong. And so, yeah, they're in the best way if you put it that way. <laughs> Happy days. Being the health and safety police inevitably means treading on a few toes. So worst case situation, I was to turn up here, these guys just in their trainers, jumpers, no PPE, jetting about with no masks, anything like that. I'm looking at closing the job straight away. If they're serial offenders, they're going down the route of losing their jobs. Great. From head to toe, they're safe to go. So it's on with the job in hand. What have we got? Just the 150 clay. Most of the risks the guys deal with are down in the sewer. So all they're doing at the moment is they're just doing a quick camera survey, see if anything needs cleaning in the line. Basically, we're getting there before customers have even noticed that they've been blocked up and just preventing in the future for any issues that they've got. Take a picture of that. So the boys use remote cameras to minimise contact with the effluent underground. These are in the sewers pretty much every single day. Um, as you can tell with this one, this one gets used a lot more with the state of that one. They also help the crew assess hard-to-reach areas of the network. Basically, what's happened there, that U-bender's blocked up. With the camera pinpointing the clog, it's a simple, albeit smelly, task to shift the jobby. Happy guys. That's lovely and clear, no? <laughs> you cool. yeah. Love that smell. <laughs> With the smell of the sewers, now we don't even actually notice the smell anymore. I believe they call it nose blind. <laughs> you get the occasional one. Yeah. That does, does make your eyes water. The occasional one does catch you off guard a little bit. Stink aside, it's a job well done, thanks to these health and safety Cono sewers. Coming up. The grime-fighting trio return to the rank camp used by rough sleepers. Doesn't look any different to when we first came last week, does it? But will anyone be home? Is there anyone still here? Oh. Hello? And a pair of brazen dumpers... He nonchalantly raises the, the back of the, the tipper... ..get their just desserts. The vehicle was seized and later destroyed. Back in Haringey, and CCTV plays the starring role in one of Enforcer Brian's most satisfying convictions to date. We're off to a location where we had a large fly tip uh, occur. And as a result, we carried out an investigation and identified the individual. A lot of hard work went into apprehending this individual. Councils in the capital deal with over a 1,000 fly tips a day and Haringey's one of the hardest-hit London boroughs. So, over here is where uh, the fly tip occurred, in this location here. Um, the vehicle drove along this direction, stopped and reversed slowly into this parking space right here. The passenger gets out, opens the tail lift, um, and the driver gets out and he's on the phone and he nonchalantly raises the, the back of the, the tipper while he's on the phone. I mean, it's absolutely diabolically brazen why somebody would do that in a residential era with complete disregard for the people that live here. Dumping in broad daylight. I would have thought this is something he's done before. This pair of capital culprits thought they pulled off the perfect grime crime. You've got bags, you've got boxes in there. And he blatantly, you know, deliberately drops the rubbish and then leaves with the tail lift up. But they were in for a shock. Little did he know, captured everything on CCTV. Bam. With the number plate of the van captured, justice was swiftly served. 
This individual was prosecuted and received just under £1,000 in fines and costs from the courts. Uh, he also had over 15, 16 parking, outstanding parking penalties. The vehicle was seized and later destroyed. He also received a criminal record, uh, and that for us was the icing on the cake. Councils like Haringey take a zero tolerance approach to fly tipping and have the power to seize and destroy vehicles used for criminal dumping. A week on from the discovery of a squalid camp thought to be used by homeless people near Heathrow Airport. It's not sanitary at all. There's dead rats, there's feces. It's awful. Enforcers Ian, Chloe and Anil have returned to blitz the verminous bivouac. OK. So, good news, no-one's here. Doesn't look any different to when we first came last week, does it? Yeah. No, it doesn't. Before commencing the clean-up, the team consulted with a local charity who have links to the homeless community. So, the, the outreach workers have, have obviously seen this site, and what they've said is that it's most likely not someone sleeping here. Yeah. What they think, this site is more uh, for dumping, taking drugs, drinking, which actually it makes sense now that we look at it again, doesn't it? Reassured that they aren't causing further hardship, the priority now is to get the disgusting drug den cleared. It's a high-risk site um, if it is being used for drugs and, and broken bottles. We might see needles. Yeah. Um, and it's a residential area, so... So by removing the risk, by having it clear, it's going to be good for the whole of the community as well. Oh, for sure, well, because yeah. Because it'd be a nice, clean state, yeah. and we're actually removing that risk of any, any injury. Yeah, so let's get the contractors in and let's get it removed. Okay. Excellent. The unenviable task falls to the council's clean-up crew. Right. Well, I reckon about a couple of hours' work here, and we should all be tidied up. Clearly not their first waste rodeo, the boys get stuck right in. We're seeing it more and more now in the Hounslow Borough, a lot of uh, drink and drugs increase and so on. Um, yeah, a lot of these little hidey holes about all over the place. Keep, keep just busy. <laughs> but it looks like this squeak easies. Lads, I've just found a uh, dead rat. Anyone hungry? Feeling a bit of lunch? Just lost its last customer. Absolutely disgusting. People sitting here drinking around things like that. And of course, every drinking hole needs a toilet. That one looks healthy. Look that, one. that looks healthy. Look at the bits. Oh. Lovely. Oh. And entertainment. I didn't realise they had a basketball hoop in there. What's that? Is that a roof rack? Yeah, roof okay. rack. Is that a tent? Yeah. And it isn't long before the enforcer's suspicions about the use of this site are confirmed. Right. I believe this is a, a herb crusher for cannabis. So, obviously, there's more evidence of drug use around and about. <laughs> it could make the site more dangerous as there could be other drug paraphernalia, needles, broken bottles, use of pipes and stuff like that. But the boys have saved the best jobby for last. Nice pile of human excrement down there on the floor. The reminiscer of what they've been eating. Looks like a bit of, bit of lamb or something like that there. Urgent need of a clean-up. As layers of dirt are peeled back, a trove of trashy treasures are revealed. What's that? Look. That, is that an engine? Oh, it's a scooter. Oh, OK. A bit of WD-40, a little Give it a polish. I think you're going to have a wheelie big problem getting an MOT for that. This isn't a place where people are coming to sleep. This is just a place for drinking, drugs and dumping of stolen goods. I'm sure of that now. Now that the tarpaulin's gone and you can see all this, the bikes and the scooters and all the electronics, I feel really, really good that this is being cleared. After a couple of hours of grimy graft, the end is in sight for the lads. We are just about getting there, I'm pleased to say. Looking very nice. And I call that a well-earned lunch bite. Let's just hope Ratatouille isn't on the menu. It is very satisfying seeing it at the end of it, yeah. Not a nice bit of a change. I mean, get that amount of rubbish out in the morning, it's made a big difference to the area. Nice, nice feeling. So just how much rubbish has been cleared? I would say over a tonne there. Three, two, one, let's have it. 
With this major eyesore and health hazard removed, the area's residents can breathe easy once again. Look at the difference now. Every, everything's gone, the mattresses, the, uh, the tarpaulin with all the stuff underneath it, the, the vac is gone. <laughs> so now we can let the bushes reclaim it. Yeah. <laughs> happy, Chloe? Yeah, happy. But with over 20,000 fly tips in the borough a year, the enforcers know there'll be many more squalid sites like this one in the future. So in an ideal world, uh, the ultimate goal is that my job won't be needed anymore um, because everyone will take care of their waste in the proper ways, they'll dispose of their waste properly, um, and we will be out of, out of work. Um, but until then, we will keep fighting the good fight. Next time, Buckinghamshire's dogged enforcers. We need the eyewitnesses, we need the reports that they give us. And waste weary public take a stand. I am recording you, a film. Sorry? I am filming you to give to the council. Oxford's no claptrap crusader. Problem? Cleaning. Faces the dark side of life in the fast lane. Loads of it. You did it. You. Yeah, I see. I see. And one man's super sleuth investigation. I do hate fly tippers. Just filthy, dirty, slug trail leaving scumbags of fly tippers. To snare Harrow's seven and a half ton dump and run tipper. This particular case was a bit of a feather in my cap, it was the biggest case I've ever done.